I'm Thomas D. McAdams, retired United States Coast Guard, going on 27 years. New Year's Eve, 1953-54. It was New Year's Eve, and I had the duty, I had the watch list made out, so half the crew could go on shore on Christmas Eve. Half the crew could go ashore on New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve, I had the duty, I took the watch, and the tower that day to, so one man could go on home and have his 72 hours. That evening around oh, 03, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we got a call that three or four fishing vessels were coming up from the south and the bar was getting bad and starting to break and the winds were up to about, just under gale force winds going up to 25 to 30 some miles an hour. And the bar was getting rougher all the time and the swells were increasing to 12 to 15 feet. So we took the boats and we went down to the standby at the bar. Vanderhoof, he was a BM2 and I was a BM2. That's a Bosa Mate second class. And we got to the bar and we're standing by. And as we were standing by, it was getting started to get dark. It was a dark, stormy day. And one of the fishing boats called in the Uyak, 56 foot, heavy, heavy boat, called in and said, he had just lost his engine and that he had a broken oil line and he needed assistance as soon as possible. And he was just about at the whistle buoy in 100 feet of water. And with the winds coming out of the southwest up to 30, 35 miles an hour, uh, he was drifting fairly fast. I said, I'll take the call. And I had one man, crewman, my engineer, Ray Miller was with me. And just the two of us crossed the bar and it was a rough trip to us in the bar. And the radios in those days were two radios. And so they couldn't take too much shaking around and the, the tubes would loosen up or break in there. And as we crossed the bar, I noticed the radio wasn't working and I'd get on it and I'd pound on it a little bit and it would come back and work back and forth. When we finally got to the UYAC just inside the whistle buoy, we passed them our tow line. So they got the line on board and made it fast and we strung out Oh, about probably six, seven hundred feet of line to get a, the right cat and carry in the line. And as we did this, it was, you know, wind and it was getting darker all the time. And the 36 footer only has a small spray shield on, on there to stop the waves from coming over and gouging you completely. You just get the spray. And we got him in tow and started in towards the bar. And he called me on the radio and the radio was working at that time. And I called him back and said, what's your problem? He says, the line, he said, my deck is a little rotten up forward. It was an old boat. He said, now I have a deck winch and you're tearing the deck winch right out of the deck. And it's loosening on up. And I said, Roger. And so we slacked up on the tow hawser and we had to really had to watch it because now the engine's running, we're laying there, we're pulling in line. I didn't want to have the one man pull in the seven, 800 feet of line that we were now stringing on out. And so I backed up to give him enough slack, but we had to watch it with the drift and the set. And finally he called back and he said, I've got the hawser uh, retrieved and I put it around the wheelhouse and back down to a big heavy cleat. I said, Roger, so we took off again. And about that time, the skipper of the station, Mr. Lawrence, a warrant officer, W4, he called on and we got him on the radio. And he says, do not, do not attempt to bring the vessel in. The bar is now breaking, it's dark, and it's too dangerous to bring the vessel in at this time. He said, hold him at sea. I said, wow. So I call, called the boat and I said, did you receive that? And he said, Roger. So I started making a big wide turn so I could keep the hawser taut and head back out to sea. And we got heading southwest into the storm and the winds were, kind of right going from the southwest and they were moving around to the west. And I said, this storm's going to switch on us and start coming out of the northwest. And pretty soon that, the winds will let up a little bit. And that's just what happened. And so as we were heading back out to sea, I said, it's going to be a long, long, miserable night. And we didn't have the gear they have today, like big, heavy, uh, dry suits and wet suits and that we had a fall weather jacket and we had denim dungaree pants which we had that were already soaking wet and uh, this fall weather jacket it was kind of green in uh, color and after a while it would uh, soak through and so you were soaking completely soaking wet we didn't have 
really any care to spend the night out there and we left fairly fast not knowing that or thinking we'd be out there all night so then he called me back and he said you know, we're getting the, the 125 foot Coast Guard rescue vessel out of Coos Bay to come up and relieve you of the tow. He says he'll be there sometime in the morning. Well, that's almost a hundred mile run from Coos Bay uh, up in the city down through the bar and the ship is on a two hour standby. And I said, it's not gonna be here until almost daylight. And it's gonna be a long, long, cold, wet, miserable. And Miller says, I don't feel good. He said, uh, and the boat is rolling uh, from gunnel to gunnel to gunnel back and forth. And, and the water coming through into the well that comes through the scuppers. So the water that comes over the top can run out, but it can also come through the scuppers and run in. And so your feet are continually underwater. And Miller was very seasick and he even getting the dry heaves. And I said, this is not going to be good at all. And so we're going along and about an hour or so into the tow and just plain miserable. And all of a sudden I heard the engine go Rrrr! and it came to a dead halt and stopped. And I said, oh no, I knew what it was. The line was in the screw and had killed the engine, wrapped up, got it so tight that the engine couldn't run and it's just like somebody grabbing the engine and holding it until it stops. And we're dead in the water and I, reached over on the, to grab the radio and I gave it a big bang and it, the fisherman came on and the fisherman was calling me saying, Coast Guard, Coast Guard, he said, I got my oil line fixed, I got my engine running, I got it, he said, it's running fine, it's in gear, I tried it in gear, and I said, yes, he put it the boat in gear and I'm going dead slow because I didn't want to go fast, I'm just enough engine swell to hang up and come down slowly and so when he started his engine and put it in gear, he went ahead and that put a big cantary in the line and it went like this and I go up the swell and when I came down, I landed on the hawser and it wrapped up in the screw and killed the engine. So I called him and I says, the engine is dead, I have the line in the screw. And he said, I'll tow you to sea. And I said, you can't do that. The line is tied around the screw. You'll tear the shaft and then I screw the screw off the boat. I said, then I'll be in a sinking condition. You proceed to safety, I'm still responsible for you because I've had you in tow until I get you back in. I said, you proceed to sea and I'll call the other lifeboat. And the other lifeboat had heard it and they said, well, we're coming, what's your position? I said, I'm just a little bit southwest of the whistle buoy. And he said, very well. So he started directly for me and the lifeboats, the 36 foot lifeboats had a little teeny running lights and it had a bow light on it that raised up. And I had lowered the bow light because working with the, other, the fishing boat and that, every time we go down, the spray would come up and hit the light and would blind me, so I layered that. So I went up and I put it back in position so I'd have some light. But anyway, he missed me. He went out and I drifted in and I got thinking, I'm gonna go on the, the reef over there on the north side. And if I do this, there's big heavy breaks, 25, 30 foot heavy and they'll just smash us. So I said, I gotta get out the anchor. So I had Miller hold the searchlight and I went up and the boat had two anchors, a 55 pounder and a 100 pounder. I said, I won't be able to handle the 100 pounder because the boat's rolling back and forth and that's all I need is a 100 pound anchor in my hand and have it fall and crush me against the bulwarks. So I grabbed the 55 pound anchor, took out the ready box, got 100, 300 feet of line, made fast to it, made sure all the pins were in the anchor, made sure it remained fast, threw it overboard, strung out the 300 feet of line, went forward, crawled across the, the forecastle, up into, there's a round hole up there called, the, we call it the glory hole, you could stand up to it in your waist and had two scuppers at the bottom so it fill full of water, it would drain out. And I jumped in the glory hole and made the line fast around the, the Samson post and now, you know, we're, we're secure. The anchor is holding fine. So it, it drug across the bottom of the waist and then it did, it grabbed in and it held up real good. So then I called the other boat and told him right where we were and he came over and then hooked from the 36514, another 36 footer. And he said, okay, and he threw me a heaving line. So once he threw me the heaving line, I pulled it down board as fast as I could, made it fast, took the hawser, and made that fast and he took me in tow and started across the bar and it, he said the report is that heavy swells no breaks and he started across the bar and the tow line broke we took a breaker and 
it ran our boat ahead and hit his boat and the three inch hawser just snapped in two. And we were drifting in towards the end of the North Jetty and he made a quick turn and I grabbed the hawser and I pulled it on board as fast as I could. And he came back and his seaman threw me the line and I don't have all my line in yet. So I just made a round turn and I made a quick bit, what we call a Beckett bed, threw it out and the line came fast and he took me back on out. And they said, well, we need another lifeboat and another line. So they called Depot Bay and Depot Bay uh, sent their lifeboat on out and they wanted three men. So they, they always got the volunteer fire department to help them. So they blew the whistle and one fireman came in. It was New Year's Eve. And of course he got seasick the minute they got out there. And anyway, they made it down there in an hour and a half, two hours. And they took us in tow and started across the bar. And I said, I don't like this. And I'm going to put a drogue, a sea anchor behind the boat to give me a drag. And I put a sea anchor on out and he started towing us on in. And another big, large swell came and came down on top of us and shot us ahead and hit the other boat. And it broke that other three inch vanilla hawser, just snapped it. And we drifted over on the reef. And I, Miller's holding a searchlight. And I went up and jumped in the glory hole to take a line from the first boat coming and he went right on by us. They were making their line up very neatly instead of just pulling on board and just went on by us. And Van Hoof came out and about that time before he got to us, I drifted right into the South Reef and a huge break came down and rolled us over twice. Broke every beam in top of the engine room, tore out the combings fore and aft. And I was in the glory hole and I just ducked down and held my breath as long as I could and I thought, if we sink and we're upside down, I'm going to stick my head out and I'll stick it right into the sand. And I reached down like this and it was open and clear and I stood up and the boat was upright and Miller was gone. And I crawled across the forecastle and of course he had the searchlight and the searchlight was gone and it was pitch black. And I crawled across the forecastle, down the catwalk, and to the stern of the boat and I yelled, Miller, Miller, Miller. And finally I heard his voice out in the darkness and he had went out of the boat, taken his life jacket off, but I tied it onto him in big square knots, and he landed right on top of the drogue that I'd set out, and he's pulling himself back on the drogue line, and I get him on board, and we lock ourselves in the forecastle, and we drifted along for a while, rolled over one more time, and as we rolled over, the fire extinguisher came off the bulkhead, hit me over the head, and I said, Miller, what did you hit me for? He said, I didn't hit you, but you sure are bleeding, because you bleed so profusely from the head. And I had blood all over me, and of course, we were soaking wet anyway. And I said, well, we're still in good shape. I said, as long as we don't hit the rocks on the jetty, we're fine. And pretty soon we felt, boom, 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 and we're in the sand. I said, oh, we're home free. And he said, let's get out of here. I said, no, no, let's stay put. I said, we really get grounded good. And two or three more bird breaks, and the boat hit this bottom four or five times. And I said, now, and I opened the hatch, and I locked it back down, because the boat would be still be in great shape. And I said, can you swim? And he's not very good. I said, okay, you jump first. I can jump afterwards and grab you. And he said, okay. And I said, I said, it might be a crab pot hole. It might be really deep. And he said, okay. And so he dived off the boat in a kind of a swan dive. And then we had our life jackets on. And of course the water was only that deep. And he hit the water, kind of knocked the wind out of him. He's laying there and I jumped out from him. And he'd go, ah, ah, ah. I said, come on, let's get out of here. And we ran up the beach and we sat there saying that, and the sirens went off. It was New Year's Eve, and the sirens off. I said, welcome ashore, I'm going to put in a, a beach. And the truck was coming down the beach with, with the skipper and the, Mr. Lawrence. He picked us up, took us back to the station. And uh, the doctor came, was called and came down and looked. He said, oh, he won't need stitches. He's got a good, good scrape in the head. And uh, the wife was home waiting for me, been calling all evening, wanting to know, and they just kept telling her, no, he, he's out to see, he'll probably be out there all night. So I called her and told her I'm coming home, and she says, okay, fine. And I came home, and the next day we went down with the D7 cat, got the boat off the beach, and they took it to the mill, and they lowered it uh, into the water, and it's still running today.